about 30 minutes by car ferry from Poguera on the Chilean mainland to Chacao, on the northeastern section of the Isla Grande de Quiloe. The island is situated in the Pacific Ocean off the west coast of Chile. In the small village of Chacao, there's a large wooden church, one of more than 150 that are scattered across the island. Everything is made of wood. Not a single nail was used, only wooden pegs. Since the year 2000, 14 of the churches have been designated as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Statues of various saints are also made of wood and were carved by local artists following European design. Ancud was the capital of the island until 1982. In 1767, the Spanish established a fortress here, the last before the no man's land of the south. It's difficult to believe that this fishing village was once witness to a dramatic past. For those ships that sailed around Cape Horn, Ancud represented a safe harbour on the journey north in which their sailors could rest after negotiating the stormy waters of the South Pacific. In the 19th century, this settlement became the starting point for the exploration of the wild south of Chile. Dalcahue lies to the south of the inhabited eastern coast. This single-towered, white-blue church is one of the largest and most beautiful wooden churches on Kiloe. Its main facade is decorated with a portico on the tower side, and outside there are arcades that contain nine arches, a charming feature of the island's older churches. It was the Jesuits who came to the island in 1609 who converted the Indio to Christianity and built many churches here. Riran is a remote village at the end of the world. And even here the missionaries constructed impressive churches with the help of the local inhabitants. The architecture is modest, wood, either painted or natural. The larger churches contain three naves, with one large section and two side areas. Here the wood is painted blue with yellow borders. At first they planned to have stone buildings, but instead adapted their plans to the local environment and built the churches of wood. Castro is the island's oldest town and also the capital of Kiloe province. Along the waterfront are numerous colourful wooden houses on posts, the Palafitos. When in 1567 the Spaniard Francisco de Aloa discovered the island, he founded Castro. Its imposing cathedral having been built in 1906. The church's interior contains brownish colours with circular wooden columns and a beautiful carved altar. The large main dome of the cathedral is a real wooden masterpiece. The height of the dome, as well as the figures carved from the wood of the now protected local Elerchen trees, are a wonderful sight. Conchi was once a Jesuit missionary station. 
Also here, the town's main landmark is a wooden church. Its interior is of a light natural wood, and there's a pulpit with a spiral staircase. None of the island's other churches has a pulpit. The dark blue barrel vaults of the main naves form a canopy, supported by wooden posts with carved capitals. When the Jesuits were banned from America in 1767, the Franciscan order took over their work and many of the churches date back to this period. The local artists had a distinct artistic style that they gradually perfected as their own. The small village of Virupuli is dominated by the Iglesia San Antonio de Padua, whose three-section tower is almost 19 meters high. Twelve white-colored wooden pillars support the central section of its interior. The church was built in the beginning of the 20th century. The deep faith of the island's inhabitants indicates that the myths of old have also survived and have combined with local Catholicism. The church architecture has been adapted to both the landscape and local belief. The main landmark of Nerkion is a freestanding wooden church with an elevated location. It features the typical architecture of the island, but with some variations. The once white color of its facade has turned gray and the side walls are of typical island design elements and it's supported by several inclined wooden posts. At the side of the old wooden church is the village cemetery. Here lie the ancestors of those who first made the island habitable. They had no defense against the diseases that were brought here by the Spanish. After Tierra del Fuego, Chiloe is the second largest island in South America and geologically represents the continuance of the coastal Cordilleras. From the Bahia, Punijuel, boats travel round the Islotes de Punijuel islands that lie off the main island and are inhabited by some interesting wildlife. After a short time, the first of three small islands comes into view. The various green swathes of the raven-black rocky islands tower out of the sea. They're densely inhabited by wildlife. These islands are the only known nesting place of both Humboldt and Magellan penguins are also inhabited by the red-legged cormorant and the kelp gull. The upright penguins look like guards from another world. Fairies and trolls, wizards and witches, they all live on in the island's legends. and the old myths and legends that combined with the Catholic religion created their own culture here in simple wooden churches in which the islanders loyally shared their faith.